Why do countries borrow money when they can print as much as they want? Hi everybody, I'm Landon Tsunchama and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're delving into a fascinating topic that has puzzled many. Why do countries borrow money when they have the power to print as much as they want? It's a question that even most economists struggle to answer. But fear not, because in this video, we'll break it down for you in just 3 minutes. When coffers run dry and bills pile high, the government faces a choice, borrow money or print money. This is a dilemma with a sting in its tail. It sounds like a great idea for the government to simply print whatever money it needs. I mean, this is the government we're talking about. It has a power to do anything it wants to do, right? Well, not really. Printing money is not such a great idea. To understand why, we must go back to the foundation of economics, valuation and pricing. Price is the economist's way of pronouncing the value of a commodity. The price of an iPhone is an expression of the value of the phone. Since money is the apparatus through which exchange takes place, the amount of money people decide to hold at any point indicates how much value they wish to have in any liquid form. If you have 1000 Naira in your pocket, you could buy 1000 Naira worth of value. The amount of value in an economy is closely related to how much money is in the economy. The relationship is such that the more money in the economy translates to higher prices. If there were only 50 oranges and 1,000 Naira total money supply in a hypothetical economy, all of the oranges in that economy will have to be given prices that do not exceed 1,000 Naira when summed together. In this case, each orange will cost 20 Naira. Imagine if the government prints an extra 1,000 Naira. While the quantity of oranges remain constant, the prices will not. Each orange will now sell for 40 Naira. Why? The answer is that there is an increase in the quantity of money without a matching increase in the quantity of oranges. This is how we come about inflation and deflation. Deflation is the opposite of this. One more illustration for those who haven't understand this. Think about a balloon. If you hold a balloon and keep pumping air into it, it keeps getting bigger. The size looks bigger with each increase, but it does not increase the actual material. Printing money works in the same way. It increases the quantity of money within the economy but does not increase the materials. When the government prints money, it simply just increases the quantity of money supply. And the result will be that prices will rise, devaluing the currency in the process and depending on the scale of the increase, it could lead to hyperinflation. That's precisely what happened in Zimbabwe. When the government of Robert Mugabe ran broke, it chose to print money rather than borrow money. The result was disastrous. Monthly inflation reached 79.6 billion percent, while annual inflation reached 89.7 million percent. The prices of goods doubled nearly every day. It got so bad that the government abandoned using the Zimbabwean dollar. It adopted the US dollar to stabilize the economy. Savings became worthless, leaving people who had saved for years with nothing. Trust in government vanished. This has happened not just in Zimbabwe, but in Greece in the 1940s, in Argentina in the 1970s, in Yugoslavia in the 1990s, and as recently as 2022 in Iran. Printing money sounds like a great idea theoretically, but practically, it is a disaster that ruins economies and people's life. Don't try this at home or anywhere. Have you learned something here? Share this with someone, and until I see you again, bye bye.